is oxidation reduction reactions. In this reaction, we are using permanganate and um, sodium oxalate. This oxidation reduction um, titration is kind of unique because if you remember from acid-base reactions, we use indicator to find the endpoint of the reaction. For this reaction, permanganate, because it's a purple color, is going to act as indicator. At the beginning, when we add the permanganate oxalic acid or sodium oxalate in sulfuric acid, the color would disappear. So as soon as the color, the pink color stays uh, stable for like 20 seconds, we stop addition of the permanganate. So uh, calculation also is different for oxidation reduction because you have to be mindful of how many electrons is permanganate gaining and how many electrons is the the oxalate is, is losing. So when you look at the balance equation, um, slash when you watch the pre-lab discussions, you will see the chemical reaction again. Today is just concentration of how we are doing the, the chemical the reaction in by, by practice, we do the titration and you record your number for the calculations. But for every five permanganate requires two, oxalate ion, so it's oxidation and reduction. Permanganate is good oxidizing agent. It will oxidize the oxalate ion and it will be reduced on its own. So permanganate is going from plus seven to plus two oxidation number. The oxidation number of the carbon is going to increase in the, in the oxalate ion. Based on the procedure, we are going to measure the mass of the um, sodium oxalate this is the first part of the experiment to standardize our, our uh, permanganate solution. Burette is filled up with the, with the permanganate. So in order to, to fill up the burette, first we need to wash the burette with distilled water. Then we condition for the, uh, with the permanganate solution. I just want to let you know the steps that you must take if you were in the lab, but I did them for you. And uh, I filled out the burette. I washed it first, conditioned, and then I washed. Uh, I filled out the burette to, to zero. And that gives the initial burette reading for trial one of this experiment, which you can record it as 0, 0.00. Next. We are going to measure the mass of the oxalate, but for the purpose of the data sheet, because it's asking for the mass of the empty Erlenmeyer flask. And I want you to record the mass of empty Erlenmeyer flask. So record this mass as the mass of the empty Erlenmeyer flask. Okay. Then I'm going to add about 0.2 grams of the sodium oxalate. So this should go to 120.31 almost. I would add enough. I add slowly, just small amount at the time to make sure that I'm not uh, adding too much of it. So we add enough to make it to 120.31 or in that neighborhood. Okay. This is a mask for the flask plus the sodium oxalate. Please record the number again. So we kind of managed to get the 0.2 gram exactly for this one. This is for trial one. We are adding 50 milliliters of the deionized water based on the procedure. And for this sample, we are adding 10 milliliter of three molar sulfuric acid. So I have the sulfuric acid, I measure 10 milliliter and I'm adding to the sample. So my sodium oxalate solution is ready. And I can, what I'm going to do, because I want this to dissolve completely, uh, while I'm waiting for it to dissolve, I want to start the second trial, just preparing my sodium oxalate solution. So please record this number for the empty flask for trial two. This is the mass of the flask, trial two, empty flask, trial two.
record this mass. And I'm going to add sodium oxalate for 0.2 gram. So I would go to 0.2 more, 115.92, or very close to that number. As long as you record the mass, exact mass of the sample you are using, it doesn't have to be exact, but we try to get it as close as possible. Okay, record this mass for the mass of the flask plus the sodium oxalate for trial two. So you have the, uh, the mass of the empty flask and you have the mass of the flask plus the uh, sodium oxalate for both. To this one also, which is for my second sample for second trial, I'm going to add 50 milliliters of deionized water. Just use the deionized water and measure 50 milliliters. I'm going to add 10 milliliters of the sulfuric acid. This is to prepare my um, solution for the titration. I do not need any indicator. This reaction does not require any in indicator. As soon as the powder is dissolved, sodium oxalate with the sulfuric acid and the uh, and water uh, to dissolve. We want the solutions to be hot, so we hold it on the flame for about you know 30 seconds to one minute should be good enough because the flame is really high temperature. And as soon as you see the steam, it's good enough. We don't want it to boil. And now it's hot enough. We're going to take it for the titration. So for the titration, as I said, we do not need indicator. Initial B ref reading of 0.00. I will start adding uh, permanganate solution. And as I'm adding the permanganate solution, okay, the first drops of permanganate we are adding, it disappears slowly, uh, but after that, manganese dioxide forms, and manganese dioxide acts as a catalyst. So it kind of enhances this reaction. You see that these drops are now uh, disappearing much faster. So when we add the purple permanganate, it reacts, it disappears. It's not the end point of the reaction. I will be adding slowly and mixing, and until when I add a drop, and the, uh, the, the color would be stable for about 20 seconds. And that would be the end point of the reaction. So I'm going to, uh, to probably pause the camera for you so you don't have to wait too long for it, but I will get back to you when it's closer to end point of the reaction. Okay, you notice the camera was paused, but I was adding. Now the pink color is stable for, for now. It hasn't been 20 seconds, but if it stays for 20 seconds, that's the end point of the reaction. And I will ask you to record the volume. This solution is colored solution. No excuse. You should be able to do it yourself. Okay, record the volume for the for the burette, okay. I'm just holding the white background so you can record the volume. This is the final burette reading for trial one. For trial two, I would heat up the solution. I would refill the burette because I wanna make sure that I have enough solution. So I go to um, maybe five or zero. Okay, now that I filled up the zero, I can stop at zero. Adjust to that zero. For second trial, initial burette reading also record at zero, please. And I'm going to heat up the solution. It's not supposed to boil, but it is expected to be hot. It started to steam, I can stop now and start adding the permanganate. So first drop. See, it's taking longer time for the first drop to disappear because of that 
manganese dioxide is not there yet. And after the manganese dioxide forms, it does speed up the reaction. So I'm gonna to have to, uh, to wait for it to disappear. We are going to add slowly until the color disappears and then it stays permanent for um, 20 seconds. This color change is a temporary one. It's beginning of the reaction. It does not count. The first one, it used about 30 milliliter, 31 milliliter. So this one also is going to uh, do the same. You see that the color is disappearing. It just took some time for the first drops um, to, to disappear. So I will be adding slowly, but the camera will be paused because I don't want you, you know, watch very long videos, but the color is disappearing. Okay, end of the trial two for standardization of permanganate. You have all the information except the reading, final burette reading for trial two of part A. So I'm going to use white background and hopefully you can focus and see the, the numbers. And the number is 30.60, okay? 30.60, because it was hard for you to read it. Uh, for the trial one, it was 31.00, about 0.4 difference in the volume. Okay, that's the end of part A. Now I'm going to get ready for part B of the experiment. Okay, now we are going to uh, titrate the unknown oxalic acid. Basically, the sodium oxalate in sulfuric acid solution is the oxalic acid. We are going to titrate that with the permanganate. I added 25 milliliter of unknown uh, solution our unknown solution, please mark the number, the letter unknown B, uh, 25 milliliters, 50 milliliters of water, and 10 milliliters of sulfuric acid. I heat it up and it's now hot. I can start adding the uh, permanganate. I will start adding the permanganate. I expect the same thing. It will disappear to begin with. Um, and it will be slow at the beginning. It would speed up the reaction. Then I have to add drop by drop as it disappears until the purple color or the light pink color maintains for uh, 20 seconds. At the beginning, this reaction is slow, but it will happen just like the other two. Okay, for the data table, you need the initial reading. I started at point 0, 0.00, because that's what you need for the initial uh, burette reading of permanganate. And uh, this reaction is now started. We are, as we are adding a drop of permanganate, the color disappears. I'm going to pause the video again, and I will bring you back when the pink, pink color is stable for 20 seconds. Okay, I guess that's that's it for the end point of reaction. If the color stays for 20 seconds, it is end point of the reaction. And I will bring the burette for you to read it. Color is stable. And the burette reading is 11.50, 11.50, okay? That's the BRS reading, 11.50. Going to adjust it at 12 here. Bring it down to 12 so I can use it for next trial. Okay. 
initial B red reading for your next trial, trial two, starts at 12.00. Okay, initial buret reading, 12, and you will add, mix, until it disappears. First drop, that's how it behaves. Okay, now we're tough. Okay, we reached the end point of the reaction. The pink color appeared and it is stable. We used almost the same amount as last time. And the final BRET reading is 23.3. We started from 12.0, we went down to, to 23.3. Uh, so it's very similar to what we had before. Okay, so just record the, the volume that I'm saying because it, it might be hard for you. 23.3 for the volume of the, fi the final buret reading for permanganate for unknown. Thank you. Okay.